With the Advantech subfloor assembly, you can be sure that you're building a reputation on something stronger. And the best builders, well, they may always stand apart, but they never stand alone. So ask yourself, are you bringing your A-game? Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Today we got a special treat. Big Red is gonna take us on a journey and we are gonna talk about those beautiful board form concrete piers that 60% of the house that the Hilltop Arrow sits on. Yeah, those uh, board form concrete piers, let's uh, put it in our mind. They're nothing more than the legs and feet of that house. So without further ado, grab Big Red, we'll throw the drawing down on the table here and uh, let's have at it. Let's talk board form concrete piers. Exciting stuff. All right. Let's talk about those board form concrete piers. Now, of course, we're bringing big red into play. Now, the board form concrete piers um, kind of metaphorically are the feet to the building, right? Um, when we look at our own feet, understand that the feet usually come down, you have your leg, and then they spread out to some foot. Now, why do you think that happens? Well, it gives us a little bit more surface area here to provide and stabilize, right? Having that distance. If we just went and we walked on kind of pegs of legs, then we wouldn't be very stable. We'd have no way to really stabilize our bodies. So by having that foot really helps with that stabilization as well as spreading out and getting a uh, larger surface area of contact. Well, it's no surprise that in our buildings, we have these things called footings. And guess why they're called footings? Because we have, in this case, the concrete pier. And so you understand these drawings. This is a section through the short way of the pier. This is a section through the long way of a pier. So if I took a section through here like this and looked at it, I would be looking at that, right? So here I'm looking at the trusses perpendicular, here I'm looking at the trusses in plane. So this is basically a section sliced through that, looking back at it. And then you'll see here, this is just a small plan view of what's happening up above the pier here. So that's showing that. So. Basically, these three views give you all three views of those board form concrete piers. But let's get back to, we call it a footing. Notice that the footing, like our feet, it takes that leg or board formed pier and expands it underground. Why does it expand it? Because it gets us a larger contact area. And it allows us to stabilize and keep this thing from being wobbly, right? If we just took this pier into the ground at 10 inches and did this, then there's nothing really stabilizing that pier laterally. And not only that, but look at this surface area here is about one quarter of the contact area of that footing. So by ex expanding that contact area, we could carry four times the load that we could if we just brought that brick pier down. So it makes it for the house to be a very, very stable um, structure by expanding and putting that concrete footing in. And it's all buried below grade, so it's nothing you see. You just see the con beautiful concrete pier rising up out of there. But one of the challenges for the structural engineer is that not only do we have the footing in the brick pier, but 
they're going to get cast at different times. So we have to make sure that the structural nature of this footing and the structural nature of that brick uh, board form concrete pier that they work in concert together, right? So you can see here that this board form concrete or the footing here, I'm sorry, it has a series of horizontal bars. Those are running lengthwise. Those are these bars here. You can see running across. And then we have these crossbars, which are the crossbars identified here. So we're basically building this cage, right? Like that. And we're building one down low and we're building one up high. And that basically provides the stability in that lower footing to the footing itself, right? So that's stabilizing the footing and making the footing a very strong and rigid structure. Inside of those cages, we then need to insert the board formed concrete pier. So you can see here, we have a series of stirrups and stirrups are nothing more than, um, well, actually you can see it here better in the plan. So we have these six reinforcing dowels that come up and then we have the stirrup just basically wraps around and ensures that those six dowels, so if we drew those six dowels and those go up like this, right? I'm drawing this in three dimension. Then that dowel comes and wraps around and it wraps around there. And what that dowel does is it basically forces these six to then work in concert in that board form pier. So notice that where we need that pier to be, let's say, um, excessively strong is in the connection between the wood frame and the top of the pier. Well, it's no surprise that we have three of these setups relatively close to each other, right? So they're basically like that. And the reason for that is, is we want to make that brick pier, or I just keep saying brick, board form concrete pier, very rigid up at the top because that is where we're going to insert these Hilti bolts. And those bolts are going to go down into that. And those bolts are what connects our two by four plate here on top of the pier. So we have this strong connection of the bolts are getting pushed down into the concrete, uh, board form concrete pier. Well, we need to make that pier very strong because that is where we're making the connection to our wood frame. So we strengthen it by having that series of stirrups up there. We also have this series of vertical bars and we see this there's some additional stirrups that are happening along the way, but notice that these bars, they don't stop at the bottom of the pier. They actually go all the way down into the footing, right? And that's what gives us strength across that cold joint of the footing line is that we have this reinforcing that rises up above the footing and basically ties the wall to that concrete footing. So that makes that a very rigid connection. So the top of that board form concrete doesn't want to rotate off of here and, um, and break off of the footing. And then we have here, we have the wood framing. You can see it's very similar to if this was a full foundation wall that we just have our pressure treated plate and it sits down it gets attached by those series of hilti bolts that we talked about we also have an angle here that we tie in to the top of the plate and it folds up onto the inside of that double lvl beam if you go back and look at the floor framing you'll see how that floor framing ties into the board formed um, piers, but we have that angle that then ties the LVL beam to the mud sill. The mud sill is tied to the upper 
board formed concrete portion of the wall via those silty bolts, the reinforcing bars here then tie the board form concrete pier to the footing. The footing exerts the load onto the ground and of course the ground resists. And that's why your building stands up. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, stay tuned for a quick slideshow. Always a treat. And again, until next time.